Hi there, uh, this is the Brassic Gamer and this is my Spark Station 5. Um, all working now thanks to the NVRAM chip fix or real time clock, whatever you prefer to call it. Um, I have installed a internal SCSI CD drive um, which does fit into the standard SCSI sockets but uh, its profile doesn't match the case unfortunately, you need a Sun CD drive and I don't have one of those, I can't really be bothered to get one. So all I need to do is install an operating system. So the operating system I'm going to install here is, hang on a second, I need to do stop A on the keyboard and I need to type in boot CD ROM. Assuming everything else is working, this will reset the machine and boot off the CD that's in the drive. So we're going to do next step 5.5. The operating system that came with the Spark Station originally was Sun OS uh, back in the 90s before they rebranded it as Solaris. Um, but because of the speed of this machine, this is a 110 megahertz Spark processor. So not the bottom end, but not the top end either. Top end chips were manufactured by Fujitsu. Um, but they did have some compatibility problems. So actually this is the sweet spot where you've got the maximum compatibility with the uh, with the most speed. So yeah there are a number of operating systems available including Linux uh, but what we're going to do is try Next Step uh, which was the operating system that Next Workstations used which was the company formed by Steve Jobs after Apple kicked him out uh, just before he came back and did the iMac and everything like that um, and it was Tim Berners-Lee that used a Next Step workstation to develop the World Wide Web in the early 90s. So it's something I've always been curious about, um, including the fact that OS X, I love that, preposterous time in real time clock, check and reset the date. Apparently the operating system will reset the date. Oh, this is next step 3.3 by the way, so not 5.5, that's just the installer version. Um, yeah, the date is easier to reset in the operating system. So thinks that it's 1995 at the moment. Um, I'm curious about Next Step because OS X when it was originally developed was based on Next Step. Uh, let's press 1, this is not an upgrade, this is going to install a wipe over the disk. 1 to start installing. This is the Express install, there is an advanced version of the installer which I'm not going to use. So it's just going to scan the disk. I assume it's going to uh, partition and format it. Well, it may be asking me that. I've not installed Next Step before so this uh, this will be interesting experience. And the reason I'm doing this um, is mostly out of just pure curiosity but ultimately I want to fit this spark station into my retro gaming setup. I've got a crazy idea of having Quake running on as many platforms as possible. I don't know if it's going to work on this one uh, because the frame buffer on these computers is quite weak. So I might actually end up using this as a Quake server for the LAN instead because when Quake came onto the market, yeah, I think it originally used Windows NT servers and quickly they realised the scalability of those systems wasn't going to be adequate so the Total Entertainment Network which ran the online gaming services for Quake at the time migrated their services onto Spark systems so I know this would make a good web server definitely um, but I haven't really decided what to do with it yet but certainly being able to install something like Nextnet which is also available on uh, I think on X8 86 platform as well. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start talking now and we'll just go through this install and I'll you know, speed it up or cut bits out as necessary.
and there is the multicolored pinwheel. So, next step is a derivative of Unix, just like OS X, uh, specifically BSD as far as I understand it. You've got workspace. These are all terms that you would recognize if you've used the uh, first version of OS X server. And so I'm going to find some apps and find out what we can do with this thing. But there we go. Next step 3.3, running on Spark Station 5. The first thing we want to do is get this workstation on the internet and uh, the best well the best place to start with that is to make sure the computer has an IP address so in the next admin folder which is in the root folder we have got host manager just give that a double click and then you may think nothing has happened but all it's done is it's loaded the app and you've got your options over here so what we're going to do is go into host configuration oh, no we're not I'm going to go into local configuration <clears throat> um, next step is designed to run on a net info network and we don't have a net info server here so we're just going to use the local services um, I've Given it, it doesn't seem to be picking up DHCP addresses, so um, normally your router will just hand out IP addresses to anything that wants to connect. So I've just picked one, which is similar to the one of my IP address in the same subnet as we call it. Um, make sure the net mask is the same as on, you know, just look at another computer on your network and just make up an address that no other computer is using, and the router address goes down here. Now, once you've set that, you can then quit. Uh, I'm going to discard because I haven't actually changed anything. Um, there's something else we need to do here, uh, which is to create a file <coughs> uh, which points to our DNS server, because there was no option for DNS just then. I just need to open a shell. So what we need to do is go into uh, the etc folder <clears throat> and what we're going to do is make a new file um, using vi which is the built-in text editor call it resolve dot c o n f press enter now you can see I've already put my details in here um, vi works differently from most other text editors if you're familiar with it great uh, all you need to do is put your domain on the first line and your name server on the second line and you can provide a third name, uh, third, well, second name server on the third line. So what you do is type A which puts you into edit mode and then what you can do is you can type in domain which is then whatever your local work group is on your network, it shouldn't make any difference, mine happens to be home but I don't own that domain or anything <clears throat> and then you press enter name server and then that should be the address of your router if that's what you want to use for your DNS press escape and then you do a colon followed by a W to write the file and then we do a colon Q to quit and I, that didn't work straight away for me, I had to reboot the machine, I just typed in reboot at the console, I'm just going to exit out of this, I had to type in reboot at the console and restart the computer for DNS to kick in, but in order to test if it works, what I should be able to do is, ping, um, one of the names of one of the computers on my network, and that should work, before that, I was getting host name not resolved because it didn't know what I was talking about, it didn't know what server was. And actually, that's not my server, <laughs> it's someone else's server. Never mind, DNS works. Control C to quit that. So now, uh, we can 
use FTP to download a browser.